This video was brought to you by Squarespace. I may be typing on a fake computer that I borrowed from a very good bespectacled friend of mine because I'm on a long trip and all I brought along was my green screen, but I still need to create content for and manage my website and Squarespace makes that easy. Squarespace is a super simple, super powerful way to build and run a website. You literally just pick a template, tweak it to meet your needs, then you're done. You've got a professional looking site. I did that and now making content for Arlo Recommends is a snap. I can format posts however I want, stick in pictures and videos and even tweets and stuff. I can schedule posts to automatically publish and even push to social media. So even when I don't have access to this fake computer, my site is still moving. Squarespace offers loads of powerful extensions if you need them, as well as detailed analytics, which I particularly love. To try out Squarespace for yourself, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. Then when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Arlo to save 10% off your first website or domain. And now for today's recommendation, John. This vaporwave mix. Music for finding peace at the digital waterfall. Lots of vaporwave mix videos out there, tons of them, but this one I feel is particularly good thanks in no small part to the really cool visual. Turn on your lava lamp and zone out on this. Thanks again to Squarespace. Now, back to work. Look at his little ears. Hello, my wondrous friends. How are you doing today? Like many of you probably still are, I have been greatly enjoying Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, still don't really know when the review is coming. I'm, I'm getting that question a lot and I'm not 100% sure. Still trying to figure out the format. How long is it gonna be? I really don't know. Uh, right now I'm just focusing on playing the game and I'll work all that out later. Uh, don't hold your breath though, <laughs> that's my advice. Thing is though, even if I'm not ready to do the review yet, I still want to talk about it. I still have a bunch of opinions. Everyone's playing it. Everyone else has opinions. I gotta talk about it. I, just, I gotta make videos. It's what I do. I have to. And one very big topic of discussion is how much the game improves upon Breath of the Wild. And um, it's, I mean, at least from what, from what I've seen so far, it's a lot. Like, obviously, it's a, a general consensus seems to be it's a bunch, like a whole lot. But even since before the game came out, I have taken particular interest in how the game might address issues specifically for people who didn't necessarily like Breath of the Wild. It was a very, very, very different kind of Zelda game, you know? And, and anytime you make a big jump like that, something very different, you're not gonna please every single fan of, uh, of the respective series. A lot of people had a lot of very valid complaints about Breath of the Wild, and uh, my number one hope for Tears of the Kingdom was always that it would help bridge the gap between the fans, you know? Like, it, it would uh, appeal to a wider audience of Zelda loving folks. That, that was always my number one hope. Now, now just to be clear, I, I am not one of those people who dislike Breath of the Wild. <laughs> not at all. I really, really liked it. I am not disappointed with the, the direction the series is taking. And I'm still playing Tears of the Kingdom, so I, I can't say one way or the other completely, definitively for sure yet. Uh, but I thought it would be fun to at least look at the weapon degradation system. That, that was one of the biggest issues. There are a lot of nuanced discussions about Breath of the Wild and what it does for the series and, you know, the difference in dungeon design and the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, the less structure, all that different stuff. But the weapon degradation system, that's clear-cut, you know, that's something that's just like, this is a system the game has. And a lot of people are just like, I just don't like it. It's just not fun for a lot of people. And as I explained in my review and even in the uh, recent spicy take salad I did on Zelda, I did not mind. I think it's a fine system. I think it's fun in its own way. There definitely is that element that's like, oh no, I don't want to use my really nice stuff. But like, I don't know, I, I feel like if I just made myself kind of get over that and just keep going and no matter what, weapons are always coming in. So it always kind of balances out in the end, but I totally, totally get how it can still be very annoying. I absolutely understand it. Like, and people don't choose to be annoyed, you know? <laughs> this is really just, it's a difference in brains. Different people play games, they, they got different brains. If something in a game doesn't mesh with you, then like, yeah, sometimes we can kind of get over it or change it or whatever, but like, I don't know, often that's just the way it is. It's just the way the game is. That's the way you feel about the game. And I could easily see brittle, constantly breaking weapons. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that could really mess up a game experience. So for people who didn't like the weapon degradation system in Breath of the Wild, obviously that was gonna be one of the main things going into Tears of the Kingdom. 
does the game fix this issue? We could see pretty early on in the marketing, well, not early, the marketing was like a thousand years long, but we could we could tell before the game launched that breakable weapons were still a thing. I mean, honestly, I don't even know, I don't know if there was ever a chance of them getting rid of it. You know, a lot of people were hoping for it to just go, just entirely be replaced. I don't know, I, I didn't really see that happening. For whatever reason, the Zelda team just seems to be really into it with this like open format, this Breath of the Wild thing that they made, this foundation. They seem to believe that it is a core part of the gameplay and it really didn't seem like they were gonna mess too much with like core stuff in the sequel. What Tears of the Kingdom does do, however, is introduce the fuse mechanic. And that's what everyone's been looking to is like, is this, is this gonna fix the problem? You can take any weapon and stick any object onto it, including other weapons. It's simple, it's an inc it's so simple. It's such a Nintendo idea. It, I could talk about it all day. It's one of those just simple, perfect, game-changing kind of things, you know? It, it, it manages to drastically change the process of acquiring and using weapons. And like, you still get weapons from chests and from enemies and stuff but you can use your own materials to beef up what you got. And the question is, was that enough? And before I give my opinion on this matter, let's look at a poll that I ran on Twitter. I specifically asked people who disliked the original system in Breath of the Wild if, as of right now, Tears of the Kingdom seems to fix the issue. Of the people who actually gave an answer and weren't just looking to see the poll results, it's 2020, the Twitter, it's 2023, can we please just get a see results button? Is it that difficult? Sorry, moving on. Uh, out of the people who gave an answer, almost exactly half answered, kind of, kind of, it, it kind of fixes it. And then when you take the other half who didn't say kind of, a little more than half of them answered straight up yes, and a little less than half said no, just flat out does not fix the issue. So it's a pretty good spread of answers as you know, was probably expected. Again, everyone's different. They all take mechanics in games differently. Um, but I would say all of this kind of averages out to kind of, you know, kind of fixes it L largely in a, in a good amount <laughs> fixes the issue, not entirely, but helps a lot. That seems, to, that's kind of the average consensus. And then from my own perspective, again, as someone who did not mind the weapon breakage and Breath of the Wild, even kind of liked it in a way, I think that sounds about right. Yeah, the average being just kind of like, kind of, yeah, a little, a good amount. That's, that sounds right to me. It is not a perfect fix that removes all issues entirely and perfectly. It's, it's not a replacement or anything like that. Um, and, and I could see plenty of people feeling like it's, it's the same exact problem. It's the same thing. You know, you're still, your weapons are still breaking. There it is. And like I said, even I, like I think the system is fine, but even I sometimes get that little feeling. It's just like, oh, do I really want to use this? Or maybe I'll use it later. You know, should I fight this monster and use up my cool new club? Or should I save it for later? Not a lot. It doesn't really like greatly impact the game for me. Um, but it's a thing, it's there. I, I, I experience that sometimes, but by golly, Fuse really does help a lot. Like I'm feeling it, a, that, that little thing, don't use the weapon, do it later. I'm feeling it a lot less than I did in Breath of the Wild. Fuse does make a huge difference, doesn't it? It's because it gives power to the player. It's no longer just like, what am I gonna find? Like that's it, find it in a chest, hope that an enemy drops it, that was it. If you used up a sword, you broke your sword, taking out a camp of monsters, but then none of those monsters dropped a good weapon or you didn't get a chest at the end or anything, then yeah, it could kind of feel like it was a waste of a sword. It kind of felt like losing resources. You lose more than you gain. But that feeling of like, even if sometimes I am still like a little covetous of like a really cool weapon, that feeling of coming out of an encounter and feeling like I lost more than I gained, that is no longer a thing at all. Cause now you can make a cool sword out of anything, out of anything. Even like a super basic weapon can be powered up a ton if you stick something cool onto it. And it's genius. They, this is how they really did it is you power up your weapons 
using monster parts. That That's what's so genius here. You get parts from every single monster you kill. And it was that way in the original too. It was right there. The idea was right there there it's so funny just it was right in front of their faces and like and even we didn't see it nobody saw it and then nintendo finally saw it they're like oh my gosh this is perfect it feels like it was planned all along when you take out a monster camp you are acquired like no matter what in every situation pretty much you are acquiring way more potential attack power than you are spending and like you're killing monsters all the time so at all times your inventory is filled with fusible stuff. If you break every single weapon you have, clear out the entire thing, throw them all off a cliff, it will not take you long whatsoever to build up that inventory again because you've got all that stuff in your inventory. You run around grabbing rusty swords and sturdy sticks and stuff and like, there you go, put horns and stuff on all of it, you're good. You've got another amazing arsenal. Not like the strongest. It's not like one crazy strong. You still gotta like, you know, get those from chests and things. But it's like basically impossible to be put into a situation where, oh no, I'm out. I'm out of swords. I don't have anything to fight with. It's just, no, it's 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 power to the player. It, it, puts, it puts the ability to create weapons in our own hands. It's not an exact crafting system as a lot of us were hoping, but it's like it. It really is the next best thing. Because that was my biggest problem with Breath of the Wild. It gave us these materials, but very little to do with them and no straight up crafting mechanic. It gave us the, the mechanic, the idea of having expendable weapons and no way to produce those weapons. It felt very strange that it wasn't there. And yeah, it's not, this isn't quite crafting, but it's, yeah, it's, it's close enough for me. And now that we've got stuff to do with our materials, we're just a lot more powerful and have a lot more resources because you're always picking up materials. Same as always, always. And it's interesting because one proposed solution to the degradation system was just don't have them break as fast. And I could definitely see where people were coming from. They're like, okay, weapon breakage by itself isn't the worst thing in the world, but like, do I really get 20 hits with this sword? That's so, so little. Just make them last a little bit longer. And that is essentially what this system does. Whenever you fuse anything onto a weapon, it uh, it adds just a really good chunk of durability to it, pretty much no matter what. It lets you add durability, gives you the ability to create new weapons. So, you know, even if the swords still break pretty quick, that to me is the game making it a little easier to handle. Just a little bit less of that breakage frustration. One last thing I wanna say on this topic while we're talking about it, um, while the fuse mechanic does make weapon breakage better, I feel like it also makes breakage more necessary than ever. Like in the first game, stronger weapons were decently rare, you know, or at least until like you've done everything and you're late, late game and they're kind of everywhere. You know, apart from that, decently rare. If by the end of Breath of the Wild, when you'd done everything, if the game gave you like a pretty decently strong sword that never ever broke, I think that would be fine. I, I think that would work out okay. It wouldn't break the game, it wouldn't harm the game balance or anything too much. But here, the best weapons are always made by you. Because no matter how good a weapon is, it's only gonna get better when you stick something onto it. And you can make some of the most preposterously strong weapons. These, these monster obliterating Beast weapons. Take the strongest sword you can find and staple on the horn of the biggest, meanest monster you can find, and you have got death in your hands. <laughs> That's the thing about these things. They have to break. You cannot just let the player whip this stuff up and keep it forever. That would imbalance the game. It's got to be more like a resource, a temporary tool, you know? So while Fuse makes the breakage mechanic better, it also kind of cements it. It kind of deepens it. It solidifies it as something the game kind of has to do. It leans even deeper into the idea while it also makes it better. And I like that. I think it's cool. I, I'm, I'm fine with that. I think that uh, that dynamic kind of, the, the kind of give and take, I think it's really fun. 
So those are my thoughts on the matter, but please head down to the comments, grace us with your thoughts on the matter. Not that I had to ask. This, that we're, 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 this is opinions we're talking about. We're talking about weapon breakage in Zelda. You were already on your way down there, weren't you? So thank you for watching. Have a good day. I'm gonna get back to playing. 70 hours and I've nearly beaten my first dungeon.